You know, about two weeks ago, we had a pretty amazing event. What was that event? Well, I graduated my 18 months at Mission Messiah on August 22nd. So. Amen. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty exciting night, wasn't it? Oh, my gosh. There were a lot of people came out for that. Mm -hmm. All across from Oklahoma to different parts of Texas. So it was very exciting. And I mean, Why did all those people come out to Odessa, Texas for a graduation? What was it? It was a night to remember. Um, Amen. And it was celebrating. It wasn't necessarily celebrating me. It was celebrating what the Lord has done in 18 months. Because Amen. it was a complete radical transformation going from one side of the spectrum to the other side. And we all know I didn't want to do it, but <laughs> it's the Lord that got me through it. So we were just celebrating the Lord and really seeing um, what a Mission Messiah graduation looks like. Because they're few and far and Let me tell you, she was a beautiful example of <laughs> a Mission Messiah graduation and graduate. But you know, Liana, it didn't stop there, did it? In no fact, sir. it was just getting started. In fact, uh, who was that couple that you uh, took off from the graduation the next day and headed to Oklahoma with? So um, I got arrested in Grimen, Oklahoma in November 2017. And the woman who brought me to the Lord and introduced me to the Lord um, her husband was one of the arresting officers in my case. And, uh, <laughs> Go figure. Yes, they tag teamed it. And uh, so that ministry brought me to the mission, and they've kind of kept up with me my entire walk here. And the um, they're called the Barbies, the man and wife. And so um, they've just loved on me and kind of took on this role as spiritual parents and sent me birthday cards and just have visited me throughout my journey here. And so um, they came for my graduation from Guyman, and I went back with them. I actually had court. Um, I do appear to uh, hopefully lower my probation, which it went well. And um, they took me back with them, and I was able to do some jail ministry in the same jail that I was actually in. And just come on, now, did you get that? The same jail cell that she was in, or the jail you were in, you went back after graduation and did what? I ministered to several women and I was able to do it twice, not once, but twice. And it was it was really cool because there was moments leading up to it that doors were closing. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I'll be able to go through with it. Not because I didn't want to, but circumstances were were not falling into place. And I was like, I was giving it to God. And if it was his will, it will be done. And literally the last minute I was able to go in. And then even the second time I was able to go in, it was a very last minute thing. And so it worked out. And. Um, the ministry that goes in there, there are a bunch of, uh, we call them church grannies because they're a bunch of old, <laughs> innocent looking women, but they go in there and they love on the women and um, they do Bible study pretty much, but that wasn't what I was in there to do. It was more just, um, I was rising them up and I was calling them out a little bit. And uh, How'd they receive you? They, very well, actually, they, um, they asked a lot of questions, which was really um, encouraging because sometimes in those environments you don't have a lot of receptive people but um knowing that i was just in their position 18 months earlier it was it made them very receptive to what i had to say because i was in their shoes and i did it you know and it's not more of a pity party it's more okay how are you gonna get yourself out of your poopy diaper and dust yourself off you know and i pretty much <laughs> tell it like them, it is truly you have to but you tell the truth in love and it's i pretty much gave them a mission messiah 101 in an hour and um, I equip them with everything they equip us here as much as I could because he call, he equips the saints, you know what I mean? And we, have, we all have the same um, giftings and the same opportunities, but not all of us know how to operate or use them. And so I was just kind of teaching them what I was taught and that it's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. And then when I went the second time, um, I found out that the girls were reading the Bible to each other in the evening. So it was just really encouraging that. You know, I'm not saying it was me, but I was able to be well, a vessel. Let me just say, I'm saying it was the spirit <laughs> of the Lord upon Liana, moving her and speaking through Amen. her to effectuate those kinds of desires and stir them up. Amen. Mission Messiah is an 18 month program for women and women with children. Those real life experiences are what should make truth easily entreated. Our desire is to see women set free from life debilitating substances and events. 
Our program is solidly based on Jesus Christ and His plan of living. Our emphasis on biblical study, scripture memorization, life skill development, and renewed family living is interconnected to bring wholeness back to hopeless lives. In the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> wow Warehouse and Zip Business Services developed out of the need for practical job training and discipleship. They are flourishing businesses filled with our graduates and trainees. Is Mission Messiah the answer for someone you know? Ever since I graduated the mission, even like that morning of my graduation, the Lord woke me up at 4.30 and just started imparting all of this revelation to me and it's just been a constant uh, spiritual high for the last two and a half weeks and it's a little overwhelming, you know, but it's just, it's taking one step out of, at a time in obedience and taking that step of faith even when you don't know what it's going to look like. Um, he gave me the vision of like, like having a blindfold on and he's leading me by hand and so Amen. it's just multiple st steps like that one step at a time but just continuing and not giving up and just endurance and um it's just so cool like he imparted to me we hear that scripture a lot he will restore what the locust ate and then he gave me the revelation that he's in my mind i was expecting him to restore my past to me and the relationships in my past but he gave me the revelation that he restored my future to me mm, and the, there uh, you the go. opportunities That's good. in my future because I'm a felon now and the road I was going down, I was trying to overdose. I wasn't trying to live anymore and I was trying to get as high as I can to escape my problems, you know, and so he imparted to me that he restored a healthy future for me and the people that he put in my life, he showed me their purpose for each one of them and what they were doing in my life, you know what I mean? And so um, it's just amazing. This life with the Lord is, I wouldn't trade it for the world and it's, we have to have endurance and to run the Amen. race. Amen. You know, uh, I heard another story. Now, on Sunday morning, you had the opportunity to speak in one of their churches yes. in Guyman. Is that mm -hmm. correct? And uh, I heard reports back from that. What What was that about or what happened? So um, I was able to, to speak in their church on two different occasions. Um, the first occasion, uh, the ministry kind of threw me a little party. They call me one of their victory girls because they've been doing this ministry for about seven years. And um, I'm a fruit of their labor. And so they were kind of celebrating that. And I got to kind of give a tidbit of my time at the mission. And then the next morning, Sunday morning, I spoke in one of their Bible study classes. And there were, I kind of was in a spiritual high so i didn't know how many people were in there you know when you mm. get filled with the holy spirit but there were reports that there was about 60 people in that room and they were crowding to get in Come on. and um i just gave my testimony and kind of what the lord was putting on my heart and they were asking me questions and stuff like that and um i'm not sure his position in the public school system in guyman but he came up to me afterwards and he told me that i, I heard he was the superintendent but i yeah. Who knows? yeah he has a uh, high position, high up position there. Yeah. and so he told me he was going to email his teachers and kind of give them a bit of my testimony and tell them how they can better encourage children that come from broken homes and come on. to kind of love on them a little bit more um so hopefully they don't slip through the cracks and they don't go farther deeper in the hole so it was Amen. just really encouraging because we have staff prayer every monday and that's been my prayer is lord let's get to these chosen children that Amen. come from broken homes let's protect them and let's the school kind of step in so it was really a manifestation of prayers that i've been praying because my heart goes out to them and so it was mm. just really cool every day on my trip there it was it wasn't like a vacation because i was doing so much ministry but it was <laughs> just so cool because i was seeing the lord move in so many different ways and you know it was just a whole different perspective so i've been on fire non-stop for the last two weeks come on come and you know what that's that's the life the Lord wants for Amen. us. He wants us encouraged and excited and on fire Amen. for Him, sharing the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And you know, uh, as I listened to Alana here, and and part of the story that that I'd heard was just the uh, amazing, incredible impact it had upon that school administrator to to see. In fact, I heard that it, it was like it restored hope to him in in our youth uh in Amen. in this hour in which we live and y'all 
That's what the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ does. And the reason we're in the, the hole of depravity that we are is because we as believers allowed God to be taken out of the classroom. Mm -hmm. we, allowed, we allowed prayer to be taken out of schools. We allowed these things to happen. And now we are reaping the consequences of those decisions. So it is time mm -hmm. to turn the tide. Amen. For us to speak up and to put Jesus Christ back center front Amen. of every aspect of our lives. Would you help us do it?